Hey, this is part two of the CSS Tory build. If you missed part one, you might want to check that one out first. We went over the cabinet construction as well as the crossover assembly. In part two today, we're going to cover the paint and the veneer. Get these to a ready state so that we can start testing the performance. Well, I won't hold you up any longer. Let's get right to it. Jumping right into finishing these up, what I'm doing here is applying a pre-stain conditioner. There's a lot of different schools of thought behind this one. Some people will use a glue type mixture or a Bondo or even like a drywall compound. Basically what we're trying to do here is get everything sealed up so when we spray this, it doesn't absorb everything, especially in the corners, which an MDF tends to absorb everything. Basically just get a sharp razor, get a straight edge, make a number of passes and it really should cut pretty easily. What I have here is heat lock iron on veneer adhesive. It's specifically designed for iron on veneering. The nice thing here is it doesn't have any VOCs and it's nice and thick to prevent any bleed throughs. And it cleans up really easy being as it's a water-based formula. Roll this onto the cabinet and the veneer. I would suggest to use a roller for this. It's gonna be really difficult to install without that being that it's pretty thick. You really should tape down your veneer like I did. That way it won't move around and potentially get adhesive underneath it and onto the actual veneer. I actually did two coats on both the cabinet and the veneer. It's safe insurance for coverage and really didn't take long at all. This is what it should look like when you're done. You should have complete coverage of your adhesive on both the cabinet and the veneer and it should be dry to the touch. There shouldn't be anything sticky at all about this until you apply the heat later on. Once dry, you can lay the veneer on top of the vinyl and apply heat with your clothes iron. Use a medium, high setting, and just keep moving. Expect around one to three hours for a full bond strength with the glue. There are a lot of options when it comes to trimming veneer. The quickest is a router with a trim bit, but not everyone will have access. So I went with a budget option that works, but requires a little bit more time and effort. I picked up this trim tool on Amazon, which I'll link below. The blade that can be adjusted and it cuts well with the grain. Against the grain, expect more difficulty, especially with a thicker veneer. Here I simply use a razor blade and took my time. If you're going this route, cleaning things up by hand, expect to spend some time with the sharp razor, getting the veneer close to flush. When I say close, I don't really expect you to get the final look with the razor. Instead, we're gonna be using a sanding block to get it perfectly flush and to smooth any inconsistencies in your razor cleanup. A couple painting tips. Wet the floor to prevent kicking up dust and put something underneath the box. I have some pennies under the box to make sure that I can cleanly spray the bottom edge. Now we move on to the primer. I only show you one coat here, but I think I actually laid down around three coats. It was pretty thick. So I had something to work with when I started to sand this one. For this part, depending on how smooth your primer finish is, pick an appropriate grit and put it on your sanding block and start wet sanding. If your primer wasn't applied thick enough, you likely will be sanding through your prime coat back down to the wood, which is not what you want to do at this point. The ideal goal is a smooth matte look. Take caution when sanding any corners or edges. It's very easy to apply too much friction to these areas and quickly sand through the prime coat. Either do it by hand softly, or really take your time with a sanding block. What I'm doing here is wiping everything down with a tack cloth. Now that we have a smooth paint surface, the last thing we really want is dust nibs in our base coat. Well, now we're on to spraying the base. Each speaker actually took about a can of the base coat to get the coverage I was looking for. I believe this was around three coats as well. If you're not familiar with this little spray booth, I will link it below. It's really handy for small to medium sized projects. You can control your environment as far as contamination from dust a little more than out in the open and prevent overspray from pretty much getting everywhere. A little reminder to wear your PPE. Today we'll be spraying the clear with a 1K finish. Not nearly as toxic as a 2K clear, but you should really still protect yourself here. The clear coat went on over three coats. The final coat laying down as thick as I could without any runs. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a 1K clear. It still does a good job if applied properly, but won't be as hard of a finish as a 2K. The 2K will have a major advantage when it comes to wet sanding the final finish, 
Definitely an advantage if you're attempting a piano black finish. If you're not comfortable handling 2K clear or just want to leave it to a pro, an auto body shop can easily take care of this step for you. Now to peel this tape back and see what I got myself into. This is one of those where you have no idea how it's going to turn out and with the number of steps it took to get to this point, you don't want to have to start all over here. Luckily the transition from paint to veneer went well. It's going to take some cleanup and trimming, but that's expected with this kind of work. Now it's time to fine tune things. Break that sanding block back out and start to clean up all the edges where the veneer and paint meet. I was attempting to sand the veneer very thinly at the edge. I wanted the painted sides and the white oak to come together without much of an interruption from the side profile of the veneer. Don't be afraid to get a razor out as well to lay down a flat and smooth transition or fix any minor issues. This is one of the areas where it takes a bit of time. Don't rush it and it'll really be worth it in the end. As you can see, it worked out well. The white flows into the wood veneer, the line is straight, and unless you really start to hunt for mistakes in the details, you won't really find any issues. What I have here is Meguiar's 205 polishing compound and a Flex Auto Body Polisher. This is really just a fine tuning step. It's gonna greatly increase the gloss as well as bring out more clarity in the clear coat. This would have been a final step of mini if I would have wet sanded with increasing grits, but like I mentioned earlier, this is a 1K clear. There definitely is an increased risk of sanding through with this type of clear. It can be done, and if you want to, my advice to you would be a really thick application if you plan on wet sanding a 1K. I myself didn't really want to go that route for this. I'm not going for a piano type finish, and my finish coat laid down really nicely during the spraying, so the final polish will give me just what I'm looking for here. Just a couple quick tips when polishing. I set mine at the lowest setting and spread the product. Otherwise it splatters all over the place when you try to start at more of a polishing speed. Also, just like sanding, take care of it on the corners. Don't apply too much force and keep moving. Now just a quick sand over all of the veneer before we start to apply the finish. I think I used 180 here. Just don't go over 220 and you should be fine. Then I vacuumed up all the dust and cleaned it up with some mineral spirits. I am using Rubio Monocoat along with their accelerator component. It's a 3 to 1 mix part A and part B. Then just make sure you have it all mixed together well. It's a hard wax oil and only requires one coat for complete coverage. A little goes a long ways with this one. If you're applying this to a large surface, you might want to use a spreader to really make use of the product. But since this is such a small surface, I'm really just dumping it on and rubbing it in with a white scotch pad. A couple things I like about this product, it's 0% VOCs, which is nice sometimes. A lot of oil-based finishes have quite the smell. I also like how easy it is. It's about as user-friendly as it gets. Even the accelerator is optional. Just expect a little bit longer of a cure time. Don't wait too long before removing the finish. It will start to get sticky and difficult in around 15 minutes. Ah yes, so here's one of my mistakes that I want to own up on. Pre-drill your holes for your crossover before the assembly. What I'm showing you here is a handy tool that worked pretty well, and I'll link it below. It was just really awkward to get to the screws in the back of the box. Here's proof I really did get it screwed in. I didn't just set it and forget it. Now for installing the foam. CSS includes all the foam you need for this. So basically your first order of business is to get behind the woofer covered up. And then make sure you get the sides. And then something that a lot of people may not think about is you actually can cover your crossover as well. Don't worry about heat or anything like that with the foam over the board. That's gonna be perfectly fine. And if you wanna glue the foam in, you can do that. I did that, but if you cut it right, it's gonna sit in there pretty firmly and it really shouldn't move either. CSS gives you the port length for the model you're installing, so just measure it to length and either glue or tape it to the correct size. This drill bit has a self-centering function for perfect hole drilling. That way you're going to be consistent with your holes and hit the center every time. It really makes installing things like this, as well as speakers, really simple. Installing some of the pieces like this make me really feel like I'm getting to the end of this project. It's gonna be nice to actually hear how these sound. 
Now that I've fished the two wires through the foam, it's time to get them ready for connecting to the binding post. CSS does not require you to solder these connections. The crimp connectors are included with the kit. I just went this way based on personal preference. Not gonna give a solder class here, but one simple basic tip would be to heat the wire from the rear and let the solder pull through from the front. Never be afraid to get out that level instead of eyeballing it. Having these binding posts way off is certainly gonna look more DIY than you might like. All right, a few more connections. Here I'm gonna solder up both the woofer as well as the tweeter. Once again, crimp connectors are included in this kit. This is optional. CSS includes everything you need to build these, minus the soldering tools for the crossover and whatever options you use to finish the cabinets. I've been doing more soldering lately and it's made me think maybe I should invest in a fume extractor. I was curious if anyone has any opinions on these or ones that they like. There's a lot of really cheap ones on Amazon. I don't know if those are worth it over something a little more premium. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, we're finally installing the drivers here. We'll take out that self-centering drill bit again and that's really key here because otherwise, if you try to use a standard drill bit, you might drill the hole a little bit off center. And then when you tighten everything down, it's gonna pull it off to the side and it's really not gonna look very good that way. At this point, I was done taking risks too. I put away my drill and started to tighten these all down by hand. I wasn't willing to take a risk and put my drill through one of the drivers at this point. And really, these don't need to be that tight. You can easily put these in by hand. It's not like something like this needs to be installed with an impact. Here they are, finally done and ready for testing. I would like to thank CSS for sending these over. The project was a lot of fun. It ended up taking longer than expected with some of my design choices, but that's part of the fun with DIY builds. It can be as simple or as hard as you want to make it. I can honestly say I would be interested in building another one of their kits, likely something further up their product line, as they have so many good reviews. This one, the Tori, was really well thought out and really accessible for almost anyone to build. As you can see, the cabinets themselves finished out really well, clean lines and transitions from paint to veneer, and I really like how the Rubio Monocoat with a white tint brings the paint and veneer together. Thanks for watching today. Coming up, we have a lot of fun reviews on speakers, DACs, amps, vintage, even some more DIY projects. So please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of those. And there will be a part three of this video coming as well that's gonna cover the performance, so stay tuned for that one. All right, that's it for today. Take care everyone and I'll talk to you later. Bye.